Because of his extraordinary cue power, Jimmy White's always been able to get a ridiculous amount of spin on the cue ball. And combine this with his excellent potting, and it should be unsurprising that Jimmy's played some of Snooker's greatest shots. There's a man whose confidence is growing. But do these shots stand the test of time? Looking back at it now, are they as good as they once appeared? Is it possible that technology's come far enough that we now have the ability to recreate some of these famous shots? He's never played a better pot than that in his life, believe me. So to solve this problem, I've dug out 10 of Jimmy's greatest shots, but how exactly is this gonna work? Well, I'm gonna try to play all of them as accurately as I can in the fewest possible attempts, starting with a spider shot. Jimmy pots the brown from a very awkward position here and manoeuvres the cue ball around from the blue. This doesn't need to be played with any spin, it just requires a very accurate pot. I was pleased to pot the brown first time, just made contact with the black, but I was still basically on the blue. I have to take that, I think. Our next shot comes from the year 1984, where Jimmy was able to demonstrate his ridiculous cue power with this shot on the pink. Well, that really is wizardry. In contrast to the previous shot, this one's played with a huge amount of backspin and right hand side. The right hand side slows the cue ball down off two cushions and checks it up nicely for the black. That is, if you're able to get enough backspin on the cue ball. The difficult bit to this shot is getting the cue ball to arc across the table. And on my fifth attempt, I was able to get close. Didn't quite get enough backspin on the cue ball, so I didn't really get close enough to the black. But unfortunately, I think that's about as well as I'm ever going to do. <laughs> but can I redeem myself by arcing the cue ball off the black? Uh, I think that's going to need some more practice. Jimmy wasn't really known for playing a lot of safety shots, but honestly, this is one of the best he's ever played. Jimmy manages to put Matthew Stevens in a lot of trouble here by snicking thin off the red and getting the cue ball tight in behind the green. Once again, this one doesn't require any spin, it's just a very accurate shot. This is mainly due to the fact that the yellow's partially in the way of the correct line to get in behind the green. I mean, if I was allowed to move it out of the way like that, it would make the shot a lot easier. You have to sneak right past it, otherwise you're going to be on a collision course for the green. The problem with shots like these is they always seem easy to play because there isn't a lot of danger, but when you're trying to get the cue ball tight in behind the green, it actually requires a very precise shot. And I was incredibly relieved to get this on my seventh attempt because all the way down it looked way too hard and it just about stopped. Before our next shot, we're just going to find Mario from Zubrek, Slovakia, which is there. In this next grainy shot, Jimmy shows us how you can use topspin to make the cue ball completely stop dead. This has become a bit of a mythical shot, purely because of how well Jimmy was able to play it. This one just requires a lot of topspin to make the cue ball stop, but you have to play it incredibly straight. These first couple I played with a little bit too much angle. On my fourth attempt I went a little too far up the table, but I think it looks fairly good. But of course, from this position, Jimmy wasn't just going to roll the black in. This is a fairly standard, if not tough, exhibition shot where you play the black around four cushions. You would have thought you'd be able to play this with any spin you like, but it actually requires a controlled stun shot to avoid the double kiss from the angle that Jimmy had it. To pot the black, you need to aim roughly a foot down the cushion and get it to go just to the left of the brown spot. 
I think I was having a lot of difficulty with this one because I was hitting it a little bit too hard. The harder you play it, the more it seems to break wide, especially off the last two cushions, probably because it makes it bounce a little bit more, and it meant I was hitting the same place every time, but it wasn't going in the pocket. Considering all this, I was happy to get it as quickly as I did, although I'd like to be a little bit more consistent at this shot. We've seen the jaws of the middle pocket used before to help play positional shots, but this was something a little bit different. Escaping from snookers. Well, what can you say? I thought this one was going to be a lot easier than it actually turned out because I kept hitting the same place on the jaw roughly over and over again and getting completely different results. In the end I think I hit it more by chance than anything. I think if I tried it again it could take me 50 attempts. But before our next shot, we just got time to find Larisse, who's from Modena in Italy, which is there. Now it's finally time for a good old fashioned banana shot. This time, Jimmy uses top spin to make the cue ball arc towards the side cushion and finish nicely on the red. To play this, you just need to strike the cue ball with a huge amount of top spin, but I think it helps a little bit to play it with a trace of right hand side. It's not that this really helps the shot a great deal, it just makes it less likely that you're going to inadvertently put left hand side on the cue ball and end up cannoning into the red. It's tough to judge the pace for this one, so I was really happy to get it. Sometimes you're just playing so well that you don't even need to get in position the easy way. While clearing the table, Jimmy plays a bit of an exhibition shot here and gets the cue ball to spin off the top cushion back in behind the blue. To do this, you just require a large amount of right hand side. I thought I'd overdone this and hit the cushion too far down, but I had so much right hand side on the ball, I actually ended up in position on the blue. And as I potted it and cleared the table, I was really happy with it. It's now time for a Judd Trump light -like shot, but if we're honest with ourselves, Jimmy White invented Judd Trump light -like shots. Again, he gets a huge amount of backspin on the cue ball here, and not only gets it all the way back down the table, he also gets it across to his side. To do this, I'm using a small amount of left hand side, but you don't really need too much. The big problem is the backspin and getting enough pace on the cue ball. Even though I was playing it fairly well, my table simply wasn't fast enough to be able to play the shot, and I was really struggling. And of course, the harder I played the shot, the more difficult it became to get the cue ball to come back to my side of the table, and I ended up cannoning the black, and ending up in completely the wrong position. The only solution was to play it as hard as I can with maximum backspin and I thought that would be just enough to get back in position, although I wouldn't be able to play it on and off the top cushion, I just simply couldn't hit it hard enough. So I was fairly happy to get it all the way down here on the black and at least it gave me another chance to practice screwing up the table. Now our next shot's one that I wouldn't normally attempt, but I think there is a way I can do it. This is Jimmy White's shot of the century, and it is unbelievably difficult. What I'm not going to be able to do here is throw the cue ball out to the yellow spot and get it to spin back towards the brown. But what I think I can get away with is just spinning it around the blue a little bit, just enough to hit the brown. After my first attempt, I thought I might have been a bit overconfident, but once I played a few more, I realised I could get this shot, I just needed to get in the right position. I heard Jimmy say before, you only need backspin to play this shot, but because I couldn't fully play this properly, I needed a small amount of right hand side to help it go round the corner. 
but eventually I managed to stand in the right place more than anything else to be able to get close. Yes, yes, yes! Uh, that wasn't perfect, but I've hit the brown from the same position, so I can't really expect yes, any yes. more than that. So the reason I've made this video now is Jimmy's just set up his own YouTube channel which appears to be going fairly well and he seems to be taking it seriously, he's even wearing a hat. People seem to be really excited for this so hopefully he keeps it going and you can find a link to it in the description of this video or if you want to see more videos where we recreate the shots of professional players have a look at these two videos and remember don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.